begin today with John Calipari going into the transfer portal in his own conference, leaving Kentucky and landing in Arkansas, though the contract with Arkansas is not yet finalized. Surely there was dissatisfaction among the UK fan base after Kentucky's repeated early ousters from the NCAA tournament lately, especially after losing to Oakland this year. But Wilbon, does this move make sense to you? And do you expect Cal to win big at Arkansas? Tony, actually, I do. It makes sense just because of the – you start with the first thing you said, the dissatisfaction in Kentucky. Clear dissatisfaction. They're angry. They're spoiled brats as much as any of the Blue Bloods and probably the most spoiled. I'd put them above Carolina, Kansas, Duke, anybody. I, I, Kentucky fans. So the best and the worst in, 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 at the same time. So they wanted Cal out, and they essentially ran him out. And Cal found the softest landing place, Tony. He found a place where there's not nearly as much pressure, where they're going to have all kinds of NIL help. You think Jerry Jones and the, the Walmart people and all these trillionaires aren't going to help Cal bring some players and some NIL money, make it available at Arkansas? They will. There's not the pressure yeah. and the absurd expectations at Arkansas. And Cal can get out of there. And in Kentucky, they don't have to have a $33 million buyout, although that's pennies to them. They'll figure out who to hire, you know, at probably a little less money. So actually, in a bizarre way, Tony, even though he's the second winningest coach there to Adolph Rupp, even though he's won, even though they're not going to get better at Kentucky. Kentucky's not going to get better than Calipari. They're not going to win back-to-back -back anytime soon in Kentucky, most likely. I know they're doing that at Connecticut, perhaps. So I think actually in this bizarre way, it does make sense. I was very surprised to learn of this, that he was leaving Kentucky. Because I remember what he said at the end of the season when he said, I'm still going to recruit these high-quality freshmen, but I'm going to try and go get some older players too, presumably from the transfer portal. I thought he was committed to Kentucky. And I'm even more surprised that it's Arkansas, Mike. I hear what you're saying about NIL money. But to me, Arkansas is a clear step down. Even though they won a national championship with Nolan Richardson, however many years they ago did. that was. Yeah, Kentucky is ago. one of the five most important college basketball schools in the country, and they have been Easily. for 60 or 70 years. Easily. And I don't know yep. if he's going to like it down there. I mean, Brett Bielmo left Wisconsin to become a football coach. What, was he there for an hour and a half? I think that I, my analogy here is Nick Saban. Nick Saban leaving Alabama and this frenzy of hiring people started, a domino effect, because Kentucky is not going to get an unknown guy. Kentucky is going to roll with, with a brand name, with a big star. I mean, in the back of my mind, I even think about Rick Pitino, although it's probably not possible. No, and I think no, Cal is going to win. I think Cal will win at Arkansas, maybe not a he national will. championship. I think he'll yeah. win because you know why, Mike? Because he now is all in on the portal and he's all in on the NIL, whereas guys yeah. like Saban and Krzyzewski and Jay Wright said, that's not for us. That's but it's right. okay. Cal's into it. He's into it. Let's move to South Carolina's unbeaten season. The Gamecocks topped Caitlin Clark and Iowa by 12 in yesterday's championship game. Camila Cordo Cordosa had 15 points and 17 rebounds. She owned the paint was named the Final Four's Most Outstanding Player. It's Dawn Staley's third championship, as you know, Tone. So what does this win mean for her and for South Carolina? And where does all of this leave Caitlin Clark? Uh, let's get to the three championships for a second, because only Gino Oriema, who's got a million, and Kim Mulkey have more among active coaches right now than Dawn Staley. I think Tara Vanderveer has three as well, so they're tied. And Dawn Staley is significantly younger than all of those people, so presumably she will have a longer future to win more championships. I mean, I, I, they, they're 74 and 1 in the last two years, and they've lost nine games in the last five years. So there's no criticism of Dawn Staley. She's great. Dawn Staley is great. So let me get to Caitlin Clark. And Dawn Staley was very generous in what she said about Caitlin Clark in the postgame, very generous very. about how great Caitlin Clark was was. And unlike the coach at LSU, who waited an awfully long time to change up defenses on Caitlin Clark, Dawn Staley saw that first quarter where Caitlin Clark had like 17 or 18 yeah. points and said, yeah. no more of this. And she put a bigger, stronger defender on Caitlin Clark and followed her all around the court. So, Mike, at the end of that game, 
Caitlin Clark was missing. She was hitting the front Exhausted. rim on shots. And Exhausted. any good shooter will tell you that's tired legs. That's what yep. that is. I have an idea. It is not my idea, but I like it a lot. If I ran ESPN and I know I have the women's tournament next year, I would offer Caitlin Clark $10 million in any denomination of bills or coins that she wanted to play one more year because she has personally taken the ratings double and triple than they have ever been before, and I'm not certain she can do that in the WNBA. Not certain. Tony, no, she can do different things. She can elevate that league, as I've heard several colleagues, and Jaya Carter talked about that uh, today. Shanae Agumake talked about that this morning, and, and they were right on the money as far as I'm concerned. Let me go to Dawn Staley, who, you know, I've been watching Dawn Staley play before I watched her coach at the University of Virginia. Dawn Staley, to me, Tony, with this championship, she's got three. She won in college as a player. She's represented her, her country. She's, she's close to being the Jerry West of, of women's basketball. She's that, I'll buy that. grand I'll buy that. a person and a figure, right? And she might be an executive. She may reach that because she could go to the WNBA and be a great executive there. Dawn Staley's got whatever she wants to do in front of her. So, And by the way, she was so gracious about Caitlin Clark, which was just... Wonderful. Yes, Dawn Staley, and I said this to you on your podcast, she always seems to sound the right note. She takes the temperature of everything, not just the room, but the universe, and she gets it right. Where does it leave Caitlin Clark? She's going to be a big star in Indiana, Tony, and when Indiana travels to most everywhere in the WNBA for a while, they're going to have big crowds. So it will convey to a degree. We will see. We'll see. She's I, playing I, we'll with see. Aaliyah Boston. We wait to see that. She's got a teammate she can play with and win Just let with. me say this. Let, let's understand. Everybody needs to understand this. The better team won last night. South yes. Carolina is bigger, yes. stronger, faster, deeper. Okay, they, they had 51 rebounds, and Iowa had 29. They controlled all the putbacks in the paint. The better team won. Let's move to tonight's men's championship game. UConn and Purdue will tip it off in a few hours. They're both number one seeds. UConn hasn't had a close game so far in this tournament, or last year either. Purdue had one with Tennessee. Wilbon, who do you like in this game? Your Big Ten team or an I-95 team? Well, you know, I'm going to root for my Big Ten team. I'm going to root for Purdue. There's no question about that. But, Tony, here's what would have to happen to score that upset. And let's face it, the tournament is what it is in large part because of upsets, which, yes, happened damn near 40 years ago. Villanova beating Georgetown, NC State beating Houston. We, we, we've seen that in these championship games. Yep. Do I yep. see that tonight? Not really. Not really. I, I mean, you, I think you, you talked about South Carolina being the better team, and they are, and there's an intellect about South Carolina, and there's certainly that about Connecticut, Tony. And so, but I'm going to say this, and I'm going to the glasses, maybe quicker than you today. Purdue's got to have Braden Smith, Lance Jones, and Fletcher Lawyer. They got to shoot it. They got to shoot it, and they got to hit threes, and they got to be out of their minds. Yeah. And they can do that, Tony. That team is, was a top three team, even when they lost and Houston won or, you know, UConn took the spot. Purdue was there. They can do that, but that's not what I'm expecting. Yeah, so I'm really happy that two number one teams are going to play tonight. I was really happy two number one teams played last night. I think you get a satisfying champion when you have number one seeds in a final. I'm, I'm happy for that. Um, UConn and Purdue were one and two or three all year along with Houston. So I, I think we're going to get a just winner. And either way, Mike, we get a great story. If, for example, if UConn wins, they become the first team since Florida to go back to back. That's a great story. If Purdue wins, they pull a Virginia. They were a number yeah. one seed, lost to a 16, come back and win the whole thing. That is also a great story. I favor UConn. I'm looking at the fact that they have a big guy almost as big as Edie. Edie's not used to that. You don't have to have tricked up defenses that way. And, and UConn has been, boy, for two years, they've been really great. They have. But I, will be, I won't be surprised if Purdue wins as much as I would have been, Mike, if Iowa had beaten South Carolina. I'll be mildly surprised. Let's